You're standing in the electronics department, looking for camera lenses that you might want to buy. The lens description looks like alphabet soup, or maybe a secret code. EF? 85mm? F1.4? What do all those letters and numbers mean? I'm Cheryl with Focused Camera. In this video, I'm going to go through the basics for Canon lenses, so when you go shopping for a lens, you can buy with confidence. Now, if you need more than just the basics, be sure to check out the resources in the description below. There you will find this chart I created with a list of abbreviations for Canon and third-party manufacturers like Tamron, Sigma, and Tokina. You can download this and lots of other cool content too. Beginners often wonder, are lenses universal? And the short answer is no. In an upcoming video, I will go into this in more detail. But for now, what you need to know when it comes to Canon lenses is that they build their lenses for basically two categories, crop sensor or full frame. In the lens description, the letters that designate the lens type almost always come first in the lens description. EFS lenses are lenses designed for crop sensor cameras. These are cameras with APS-C sensors. EFS lenses are less expensive and lighter in weight. The kit lenses that come in some camera bundles are almost always EFS lenses. It's important to know you cannot use a crop sensor lens on a full frame Canon camera body. EF lenses are designed for full frame cameras. Full frame lenses are considered more professional, have a better build quality, and are therefore usually more expensive. The L or luxury lenses are the cream of the crop and have a red band of color around the barrel. Other lens types include CNE, which are specialty cinematography lenses, EFM lenses for the M series mirrorless camera system, and RF lenses for the full frame mirrorless camera bodies. You need to know the lens type, whether it's EF or EFS, so you will know if it's compatible with your camera and whether you will have a crop factor with that lens. For example, these images of a pond show a 50 millimeter full frame EF lens on a full frame camera. And then that same lens on a crop sensor camera. Notice how much of the image gets cropped or cut off. You might need to read up on this a little bit to better understand, and there are some links in the description below. The next set of letters and numbers we need to understand are the focal length. Focal length is measured in millimeters. This number is the distance between the camera's sensor and the lens's convergence point or focus point. It's not the actual measurement of the length of the lens itself. The focal length tells us how much of our scene will be captured, basically our angle of view. Shorter focal lengths have wider angle of view, whereas longer focal lengths have a smaller angle of view and a higher level of magnification. In other words, a 400 millimeter lens will bring a smaller area of the scene closer to you than an 18 millimeter lens. Different focal lengths are better for different types of photography. So understanding the difference between a 50 millimeter and a 300 millimeter is important. You will want to choose lenses that are the appropriate focal length for what you're photographing. Some lenses will have just one number, such as 50 millimeters. This is a fixed focal length. This is called a prime lens. When you see a range of numbers, such as 18 to 55 millimeters or 75 to 300 millimeters, it means that the focal length is variable or it has a zoom. A zoom lens allows you to switch between focal lengths so you can shoot different subjects in different scenarios without changing lenses as often. If you want more in-depth information about focal lengths and the differences between wide angle, standard, and telephoto lenses, there is a link in the description. There are also links to a few free cheat sheets you can download. The next set of letters and numbers is typically the aperture or aperture range indicated by the letter F and then some numbers such as F slash 1.8. Sometimes the F and the slash are not included and you will see a series of numbers in a ratio like 1 colon 1.8 instead. Aperture is the opening that lets the light in and it can be set to be open and wide or closed and narrow. The numbers on your lens indicate the widest possible aperture for that lens. Understanding the maximum aperture on a lens is also important because wider apertures allow more creative control over the depth of field. If the camera lens is a prime lens, meaning it has one set focal length, like 85 millimeters, and no zoom to it, 
there will be just one F number on the lens. That is the maximum or widest aperture the lens is capable of using. If the camera is a zoom, it has a range of focal lengths like 18 to 55 millimeters, then it usually also has a range of apertures such as f4 to f5.6. This is a variable aperture and it tells you the maximum apertures at the shortest and longest focal lengths. These numbers may also appear with the f, without the f, or as a ratio. With a variable aperture, the more you zoom, the narrower the aperture becomes. There are some zoom lenses that have fixed apertures, but these will be more expensive. Even with all those letters and numbers explained, there may still be a mind-boggling amount of remaining letters to decipher. Don't try to memorize those. Use the chart in the description below the video and download a copy to keep. So what is the takeaway? Understanding the lens type, EF or EFS, the focal length and aperture are fairly critical and you should practice learning and memorizing what those mean and how they will affect your photography. My lens buying tips would be that whenever possible, save up for better lenses. This means one, buy full frame or EF lenses. You can use them on your crop sensor camera body for now with a crop factor. And later when you upgrade to your full frame or a mirrorless, you can continue to use them at their maximum potential. This can save you from having to repurchase lenses later on, because as I already mentioned, their EFS lenses are not compatible with full frame DSLR camera bodies. Two, carefully choose your focal length so that it fits your photography genre and style. Each focal length has certain subjects that they work best with. Primes are usually better, crisper lenses, but zooms are more versatile. So whether you get a prime or a zoom is going to be up to your shooting style. Three, buy fixed aperture lenses when you buy zoom lenses, meaning that it has a low F number and keeps that throughout the zoom instead of a range. And four, if your budget allows, buy lenses with the widest apertures. Again, those will be more expensive. Not everyone can afford these options. A fixed aperture zoom costs more than a variable. And keep in mind, for example, that the difference between f1.8 and f1.2 as a maximum aperture may not make much difference for a beginner or amateur photographer, and that the higher quality might not be the most important determining factor. So always take your shooting style and personal preferences as well as your budget into account. Buying a lens can be confusing, but by doing a little bit of research, checking the specs, and knowing these few key abbreviations, you'll be able to buy camera glass with confidence. If you want to test out your understanding, check out the mini quiz in the links below and see if you've got it. If this wasn't enough information overload, you can check out the extended version of the video here. Please consider subscribing to the Focused Camera channel and hit that like button. Thanks for watching.